Yo, what's up guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean The Last Hope. Previously, we crash landed on planet Eos, and Captain Grafton has charged us with going outside and checking on things. But before we do that, let's actually go back inside. Few things we can grab right now that are easy to miss if you don't know to look for them. So if we head back into the flight deck and check out the terminal Edge was sitting at, we can get the data for the Aquila. And if we examine the terminal to the right, we get the data for the Kalnis. All right. It is a pretty cool looking ship, isn't it? Veterans to the series ought to recognize the Kalnis. And I'll be sure to list those down below in the video description for anybody playing along. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in the last episode is that regarding collection data that the game updates automatically, such as weapons and monsters and things like that, I'm not going to bother listing because, as you saw, there is just way too much of it. But anything that we kind of have to go out of our way for, like talking to a random specific NPC, or examining a computer terminal like that, then yeah, I'll be sure to list those. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, we met Welch. She's our operator, unfortunately. Personally, I wish Futaba was our operator, but no, no, that's another game. And talking to this guy, we get our very first recipe memo, number five. Although we can't do anything with it just yet because the item creation terminal is still busted. And as he said, if we have any questions about item creation, we can just talk to Welch. She's a returning character to the series. Uh, normally she's regulated to just being a crafting tutorial NPC, and she does reprise that role in this game as well. But I'll talk about that later. Well, you know what they say, any crash landing you can walk away from is a good one. And if we talk to Rich after talking to Daniel, he'll give us our very first accessory of the game, the Sniper's Bangle. Let's check that out. So if we go into our menu, and items, we can go to equip items, and you'll see that every character can equip a weapon, a piece of body armor, a necklace, and a bracelet. And the Sniper's Bangle increases our hit by 6%. Hit is basically your accuracy stat, although you never really have to worry about it. Unless you're severely underleveled or playing on chaos. But anyway, over here we get a broken metal cutting blade. Alright, it's a component used for crafting. And in this game, for whatever reason, every time you open a treasure box, you not only get a small amount of experience, but you also get a small amount of party SP, or skill points. And I'll talk about skill points a little bit later on. Now, why you get those things after opening a treasure box, I don't know, but there you are. And if we check out these weird pod-looking things that are totally not ripped off from aliens, we can get some more items. Got some blueberries and blackberries here. Those are the basic healing items of the game. Blueberries restore 40% of your max HP, while blackberries restore 40% of your max MP. And way over here, we get some insect eggs. What are these, like egg sacs? Breeding pods? Surely, Welch wouldn't have lied to us about any giant outer space bugs. Outer space bugs of unusual size? Nah, I don't think they exist. And I hope you like hearing Edge grunt, because we're going to be hearing it for most of the game. Sprinting is easily the quickest way to get around. Damn, that's pretty impressive if you can fix a shipwreck in just one day. Yeah, that is true. What can go wrong, will go wrong especially in JRPGs. And in order to advance the story, we do have to talk to every crew member out here, just like in Star Tropics. So it's basically a chainsaw. Cool. All right, now that we've talked to all the crew members, let's check in on Raimi over here. The Kalnis actually held up pretty good, huh? Yeah. Uh, 
Edge, do you think Crow is okay? I do. He's not the type to let something like this do him in. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm sure he's fine. Anyway, how are things looking out here? It's just like the Exploration Craft reported. The environment on this continent seems perfectly suitable for human habitation. There's lots of primitive gymnospermae like these ferns and cycads. The climate is subtropical and... Well, to put it in Earth terms... It's a lot like the Jurassic period. The Jurassic? Think we'll run into any dinosaurs? Come on. The exploration report didn't say anything about any large-scale life forms. What the? Raimi! What? <laughs> Welch! <laughs> What is that thing? Some kind of bug? No way. What is it? Hey, attack already. Stay back. Let's go. Stay back. Get away. Just don't. No. Railguns have no effect? Raimi, get back to the countless and bring back up. But I'll be fine. Run. Okay, don't do anything stupid. I'm taking at least one of those legs home with me! The Mark of the Luminary? No, no, that's another game. Did that work? Good. So they're not totally invincible. And that means I can do this! Bring it on! We're just getting started! Well, great. Now you pissed him off. Alright guys, it's time for the obligatory battle tutorial. It's the Star Ocean can series this? has always been known for featuring action combat. And you can move around freely with the left analog stick, and you can rotate the camera with the right. The minimap retains its location in the upper right hand corner. And in the upper left hand corner you can see your target and the distance from said target. Along the bottom, you'll see your party members HP, MP, and Rush Gauge, and I'll explain the Rush Gauge in a little bit. Generally speaking, the path to victory in any Star Ocean game is to just find a special move that's overpowered and spam it until the credits roll. Although the combat in this game is a little bit more... oh, what's the word? Uh, involved. So let's start with the basics. Pressing the X button will allow you to perform a basic normal attack. So just get close, press the X button, yes. and you attack. Pressing the attack button repeatedly will allow you to string your attacks together up to three times to form a target combo. Yes. See ya. Just like that. Attacking from long range will perform a dash yeah. attack. And these are usually quick and a good way to get in, deal some damage, and leave the enemy vulnerable to a follow-up attack like that. Pressing the direction button towards your target and holding it while you attack will allow Edge to perform a launcher. Sure you can. Again, this is another good way to open up the enemy for follow-up damage and combos. And if you time it right, you can also perform your target combo while they're in the air. Alright, got him. 
All right. nice it's not marble, but it's still a cool little air combo. Damn, those bugs kicked our asses. Well, let's go talk to Captain Mutton Chops and let him know what's going on out here. Hey, how long do you plan on staying mad? You big jerk. I said not to do anything stupid. I'm not letting you off of this. <sighs> That's what I've been trying to explain, sir. We never heard about any dangerous life forms here. Securing a safe environment and eliminating threats to colonization. These are part of the SRF's duties as well, are they not? At this point, we have no choice but to request aid from the military and strengthen Don't be our... ridiculous. Do you think I'd let those blockheads meddle in this? People are dying here. Edge. What we need here are results. Danger, sacrifice. It's all part of the process. In any case, I don't have time to sit here listening to your petty complaints. Of course, I'd hate to be thought of as a cold-hearted superior who's all talk. So I've already contacted them for you. Them? You don't mean the- You'll be receiving their assistance shortly. Until then, I expect you to follow standard SRF operating procedure, over and out. Them? Who's them? Hmm. I'll explain everything in due time. For now, well done, Mr. Maverick. You're the only man who wasn't seriously injured by that creature. Thank you, sir. It was just luck. May I ask if we've been able to contact the other ships yet? I'm sorry to say the Aquila remains a question mark. Sir, what about the Aramia? We know it's here on Eos. <sighs> we lost the Aramia's tracer signal earlier. It vanished. Vanished? <laughs> but you don't think... The possibility certainly exists, but let's not jump to conclusions yet. First, we must discover what became of the Aramia. Mr. Maverick. I'd like you to search for the Aramia. Me? Sir? It will undoubtedly be dangerous, but at this point... Edge. Understood. Edge Maverick, reporting for reconnaissance duty. Why did you accept such a dangerous assignment so quickly? And now you say you're going out there alone? Come on, Edge. That's just reckless. I can't just leave our people alone out there. <sighs> I have to get going, Raimi. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Wait, what? Where do you think you're going? I'm coming with you. And before you ask, yes, I already have Captain Grafton's leave. Are you kidding? You were just going on about how dangerous it is. And that's why I'm coming. To make sure you don't do anything else stupid. What? That has been known to happen? I said I wasn't letting you off, remember? What exactly do you think you're going to do if we have to fight another one of those bug things? I'll be able to hold my own as long as I have this. So, you think that'll do the trick, huh? Well... I guess you were at the top of your archery class. <sighs> All right, I'm counting on you, partner. That's more like it. That's where the Aramia is! Let's go. I saw you checking her out, Edge, you sly dog. You're not sneaky. But yeah, it's dangerous to go alone. Take Raimi. Raimi's one of my favorite characters, and why wouldn't she be? She's got it all. Booty shorts, thigh-high leggings, and heels. No, but seriously, Raimi is a very good character. And now that she's in the party, we can take advantage of her unique ability, which is gathering. So we just press the circle button near one of these green glowy this. spots, and you can collect some random items. Uh, we, oh, level up for Edge. Awesome. The items you get from gathering are chosen at random from a list of... 
well, there's a list of items you can get that is specific to your location, and the ones that Raimi can gather are chosen at random. That's what I meant to say. And as you might have noticed, it respawned. This is a neat little trick you can use if you're Here trying to farm some items. Just board the Calmness, come back off, gather, go back on, come back off, rinse and repeat. And now that we have more than one party member, we can take a look at the tactics menu. Uh, you can press the triangle to change the party leader, and the party leader is just the character that you control at the start of every battle. And you can move your party around, well, when we get more party members. And pressing square will bring up the tactics. So in this game, you only control one character at a time, and the AI controls the rest of your party. And the AI is actually pretty smart. So you can choose from the list of uh, play styles here. You can also take a quick look at the status menu, I suppose. You've got your basic information, equipment on the left, elemental resists to the right. You can press the X button to change a character's name whenever you want. It's kind of cool. And if you press down, you can see what skills they have equipped for battle. And we may as well take a quick look at that as well. So go to skills, battle config. Right now, Edge has Rising Blade, and Raimi has Sonic Thorn. Basically, you just assign special abilities to these buttons. You press the L2 or R2 buttons in battle, and your character will use their special ability. And you also have passive battle skills that we'll eventually get, but not right now. So let's have a, t let's have a quick look around. Now that we've killed the bugs and everything, the soldiers have cleared out the debris. Uh-oh. Well? Not bad. I said I was counting on you, didn't I? <laughs> and of course, the primitive bow and arrow is more effective than the futuristic railgun. Absolutely. At least with the sword, it kind of makes sense. All right, over here, we can get some big berries. All right, I believe those restore 70% of your max HP. So you may have noticed that we can see the battles, or the enemies, on the map, rather. And yeah, there are no random battles in this game. Attacking from behind does give you the initiative with the free engine. I would like to get knocked down. I can because when your character gets knocked down, pressing the X button will allow you to perform a wake-up attack. Okay, they're not cooperating with me. On the flip side, if you knock an enemy down and get close to them and press the attack button, you can attack while they're down. In Edge's case, he'll do a downward stab. But one of the main ways we're going to deal our damage is blind sides. This is the first major mechanic of the game. And all you gotta do is hold the circle button to charge up. And when you're being targeted, just press any direction, and you'll blindside. You'll never see it coming. And blindsides have a variety of bonuses. Uh, the biggest one is that whenever you blindside an enemy, you get guaranteed critical hits and bonus damage. It's a really great way for getting in, dealing massive amounts of damage, and just annihilating everything. And real quick here, we got a hidden gathering point next to this tree. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those. We can use this. And now that we've talked about blind sides a little bit, let's go over the beats system. So beats are they're kind of like stances, and the word stands for battle enhancement attribute type. And we have three to choose from. We have strike, neutral, and burst. Strike is more offensive, and it gives you bonuses to your blind sides. And Burst is more defensive, and it gives you bonuses to Rush Mode. And I'll talk about Rush Mode in the next battle. So basically, uh, you just pick which beat you want to use. The default for Edge is Strike. And on the right there, you can see that choosing this 
It will give you a little bit more attack, a little bit more intelligence, and a little bit more accuracy, as well as increased damage to blindsided enemies. And for Burst, you get increased critical hit chance during rush mode. Um, typically, it doesn't matter. Um, keeping Edge on Strike is a good idea. Uh, Raimi's default is actually Burst, and that's what I want to use with her late game. Although switching her to Strike could be good if you're going after some of her battle trophies. And then you'll notice that Neutral gives you the stat bonuses of both stances, but you don't get any of the special abilities along with it, so I don't know why you would ever use this, or why this is even an option. So you're better off just picking one of the two and just beat it. No one wants to be defeated. Um, you may notice that it's also rank 1, and the gauge to the right is filled up a little bit. Um, just completing battles with one of these beats um, selected will increase the experience, and when it fills up, you will increase its rank. Higher ranks give you more stats and more special abilities to utilize. Alright, so let's, uh, let's have a look around here. Here we get a wind gen. Awesome. And we got a new enemy. Oh no, not the bees. Not the bees. Got killer wasps here, so best way to deal with them is to blindside. Here I come! They are weak to earth, although we don't have any earth elemental attacks right now. It's not like I was holding back, but. Is yeah, those guys, not so tough. The bees we encounter later in the game, oh, they are just downright devious. They will kick your ass. And you will learn to hate them as much as I do. But for right now, nothing to worry about. This is our chance. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to manual mode for Raimi. You can do that by pressing left or right on the direction pad. Wide open. And I want to talk about rush mode. Oh, by the way, you can cycle characters by pressing L1 or R1. So getting hit will fill your rush gauge, um, as you may have noticed. You can also hold down circle to basically charge up Dragon Ball style. And if you charge up for too long, your character will actually get stuck, like so. So don't do that. I believe you can charge up around 20% of the rush gauge before you have to let go and then recharge. Oh, cool. Not yeah, you saw that? Whenever you get knocked down, you just spam the X button as you're getting up, and you'll do a wake-up attack, like I mentioned. Now, when your rush gauge is full, after charging up for 17 episodes, you can press the square button to activate rush mode, and basically you go Super Saiyan. While you're in rush mode, you have increased run speed, your attack animations are faster, you also have increased critical hit chance, and you can't be interrupted or knocked down. So it's pretty good. Uh, one thing to be mindful of is that enemies also can enter rush mode, and that is a bad thing. Alright, got him. We also have a bonus board on the right there that you may have noticed I've been filling up some tiles. And basically there are four different colored tiles that you can acquire to fill up your bonus board and each one gives you a different, well, bonus. Um, yeah, we want to stick to the left here. Uh, blue tiles, for each one that, uh, excuse me. Uh, anyway, for each blue tile that you fill your bonus board with, you get an extra 10% experience, and you get blue tiles by defeating enemies with a critical hit. Another reason why you want to use blind sides. There are pink tiles, and for each pink tile you have on the board, you can restore, well, you will get restored 1% of your max HP and MP after battle. And the way to get pink tiles is to defeat enemies using only special attacks. There are golden tiles, which you get by defeating multiple enemies at once. And for each gold tile you have, you get 10% more money after battle. And finally, there are the green tiles, which you get by surviving ambushes. And for each green tile you have on the board, oops, wrong button, you will get one skill point. Here I come! 
because right now I typically like to focus on getting blue tiles, so we can get a lot of experience. Kind of like grinding without grinding. Here I come. Yeah, yeah, just keep an eye on uh, the mob's HP in the upper left hand corner there. Hopefully, Brainy doesn't kill this before we hit it. Game. I was just getting warmed up. Bring them on. Now that's what I'm talking about. All right, into level. It's also important to know that your bonus board can break, causing you to lose tiles. And that can happen if you take a, a critical hit, or um, more specifically, getting hit by an enemy that's in rush mode has a really high chance of breaking your board. Um, running away from battle will also cause your bonus board to break. And here we get some money. Also, for some reason, every time you reload your save file, or you load up a new save file, your bonus board will break as well. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, lemons. And, um, just cool. I'll just keep showing the battles for now. But eventually I'll cut them out. Here I come! I was just getting warmed up. Bring them on. Now that's what I'm talking about. All right, rank up. Okay, how are we doing here? Yeah, we're almost through this area. A lot of enemies in this area. I would recommend filling up your bonus board with blue tiles, like I said, and just fighting every enemy you see along the way. But we are going on 30 minutes, so for the sake of this LP, uh, we are just going to get to the next area. Right over here, we'll get the last item for the area. Insect leg and a warped carapace, alright. Ooh, we got a new enemy on the right there, the Garrow. Gotta watch out for these guys because they have a special ability called Schism. And what that does is it basically splits them. And uh, it could be a good way to get some extra experience, but I wouldn't sit around waiting for it to happen. Oh, sweet, I got the knockdown attack there. It's not like I was holding back, but. Is this all they've got? Maybe well, that's all they've got for this episode, because we're going to call it quits here, guys. And when we come back next time, we'll continue our reconnaissance mission. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Kai, and I'll see you next time. Take care.